For the last four years, I've been trying to make satellite overlays for my open CPN, but it's always been so complicated. But now, there's some new programs that just came out that make it easy. So, if you want to make satellite overlays for your open CPN, this video is for you. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. Well, thank you for coming along for the ride on another Tip on Tuesday. This week, we're going to talk about making satellite overlays for OpenCPN. But first, I thought it necessary to talk a little bit about navigation files. What the hell is an MB tiles and XYZ tiles file? And of course, what is a cap file? And what's the difference between a raster and a vector file? And after that, we are going to view XYZ tiles on OpenCPN. We'll download the program to make satellite overlays. Then we will load map locations into QGIS, which is the program to make the satellite overlays. More on that later. Then it's easy. We'll make some satellite overlays and test them on OpenCPN. And then you will be free to safely move about the world. Thank you very much. Now let's take a look at some MB tiles, but we probably should be calling them XYZ tiles, even though they have the .MB tiles extension, because they are the same thing. Sometimes we call an Excel file an XLS file just because of the extension. Here are some XYZ tiles I made for Sukutra to Djibouti. We will be heading into the Red Sea and we will need these satellite overlays for the crossing. What I wanted to show you is how large the files are, especially this one. This file is larger because it contains many zoom levels and gives much more detail. The older CAP files are smaller. They only contain a single zoom level and are just like a JPEG with some embedded global position data. But the XYZ tiles files are like a pyramid of CAP files. Here is the lowest zoom level and here is the highest zoom level. All four of the levels are contained in one XYZ tiles file. Later in this video, we will create an XYZ tiles file with 17 zoom levels. And the coolest thing is, the latest update of OpenCPN can now display XYZ tiles. Go figure. And now for the basics of raster versus vector. So a raster file is better for a photo, but the vector is better for maybe a logo. Here is a photo of Aquarius, and when we zoom in, you can see we lose detail. And here is the smiley face I just made. In raster form, zoom in and you lose detail. But zoom in on a vector file and there is no loss of detail. And that's because a vector file is made up of code, not pixels. In OpenCPN, you can zoom in on a vector chart without loss of detail. But the cap file, which is a raster file, loses detail as you zoom in. But the vector chart still has detail at the highest zoom levels. Now, here you can also see there is a discrepancy as to where that little island truly is. Just a note, sailors. Don't put your absolute trust in any map or chart or even a satellite overlay, period. That's why Aquarius travels with at least three maps and most of the time more. But sorry folks, we only carry one large paper map, mostly for playing darts. 
We also have some maps in OpenCPN that are raster files, like these we used in San Blas, just north of Panama. These were the best maps for San Blas Islands, but now I would only sail this area with both these raster charts and satellite overlays. These maps were good, but with the additional satellite overlays, I would feel very comfortable sailing around the San Blas. Now let's start up OpenCPN and take a look at some XYZ tiles I made for the Gulf of Aden, Sukutra to Djibouti. Now that OpenCPN is open, let's add the directory for my CM93 vector charts and the XYZ tiles I made for the Gulf of Aden. We need to prepare the charts and rebuild the database. Voila! We are ready to view my new satellite overlays. I made three XYZ tiles without high zoom levels that completely cover the Gulf of Aden. Then I picked out areas like the pier at Sukutra where I can zoom in with 17 levels of zoom. Other islands, I gave additional zoom levels, but not the full 17 levels unless I thought I was going to be trying to anchor in the area. I might anchor here in an absolute emergency. Now here you can see there is a difference between the satellite overlay and the CM93 vector charts. I would suspect that the satellite overlay is more accurate in this location, but in this case you just need to be careful. Around Djibouti I made lots of XYZ tiles because there is a limit on how much data you can get in any one XYZ tile. You can't just do the entire world with 17 levels of zoom. That would take forever on my laptop. Here you can see that the detail is good and I would feel very comfortable going into this area even at night. But of course it's always better to enter any new port or anchorage in the daylight. And you can see here that the CM93 vector charts line up well with the satellite overlays. This is usually the case in heavily navigated areas. I also made an XYZ tile for the entrance into Malpighe. We had a difficult time getting into Malpighe. At the time, we only had two maps for the area. The CM93 vector charts and Navionics. One was correct and the other was about 200 yards wrong. We didn't know which one was correct until another yacht inside the atoll called us up and told us that the Navionics charts were correct. And here you can see that the CM93 charts are off by almost 200 yards. If I followed them, I would have ran aground just about here. Another reason to have three sets of charts aboard your vessel. Now let's get the QGIS program. I will put a link below. Just download and install the program. It's free because it's open source. Please don't forget to donate to the software engineers that made this program possible. Next, install the program. Note, you may have to work a little bit with the permissions to install an open source program on your computer. Here is a list of several links I found where you can get XYZ tiles. I will put these links below. The first thing you need to do is open QGIS and add these locations into the program. A few may already be preloaded. Open QGIS. Bing and ESRI imagery are already preloaded. Let's first add Google Roadmaps. Hold down Control and click on XYZ Tiles. Then click on New Connection. This opens up a new window where you can add the name, your choice, and the URL for an additional XYZ Tiles link. Fill in the URL you will probably copy paste just like I'm doing and add the name. I will call this one Google Road. Then click OK. 
Now, let's try the link. Double click on Google Roads. If the map appears in the middle window, the link should be working properly. In this case, the link is working well. Now, repeat until all the links are loaded. Let's look at the maps and make sure all the links are working. Double click on all the links so they appear in the bottom left window. Now you can click on and off with the checkbox. The top one that is checked will be shown in the middle window. Click through them all and it looks like they're all working at this time. Well, now it's time to make some satellite overlays. Let's do it. Open QGIS. Then, at the top, click on Project, pull down to New, and click it. I'm going to need a place to save my new files, so let's create a folder and call it Red C. I will choose Bing and double click on it. Then, use the trackpad to line up the area which I would like to make a satellite overlay, the Red C. Let's add other links to XYZ tiles for this project so I can compare them easily and use the source that looks best for this location. In this case, I added ESRI and Google. I just double clicked on them both. For this area, I like ESRI. And even though Bing is still checked, it will not show because it's below ESRI. Now, to the right is the processing toolbox. If you don't see it, click here to display and or remove the processing toolbox. Now click on Raster Tools, then click Generate XYZ Tiles, MB Tiles. A new window appears. Here, you decide the area of the map you would like to create, the zoom level, the max I believe is 18 and the min is 0, but I use a min of 2. Dots per inch of each tile, I always set it to 300 to give me the best resolution. I create PNG files and I leave quality JPEG only at the system level default of 75. I also leave the meta tile at system default of 4. I have previously set up a folder to store the MB tiles files. In this case, I called it Red C. And here you will also name the XYZ tile file that will be created. Let's fill in the data for our first XYZ tile. I will choose a minimum zoom of 2 and a maximum zoom of 10. DPI or dots per inch all set to 300. I will leave the tile format as PNG and the quality we will leave at 75. The meta tile size will remain at a system default of 4. We will click here and pull down and click save to file. Now I can input the name of my new XYZ tile. I will name it Red C Overview, and here is where the file will be saved. Yes, I messed up, and I left the destination folder as OpenCPN Sucutra, so I will have to move the files to the Red C folder later. To choose the outline of the new chart, you can click this button here, and you will choose the entire window for your new chart or you can click here and pull down to Draw on Map Canvas. I will choose Draw on Map Canvas. Use the trackpad, click and drag, to draw the map area you require. That's probably a bit too large. Maybe a bit less than half of the Red Sea will work. And click 
run. And just about everybody makes this mistake on their first chart. Too large an area for the zoom levels. Let's click change parameters and change the maximum zoom from 10 to 8 and the minimum zoom from 2 to 4. Then click run. Wow! That was quick. We just made our first satellite overlay together. Now let's make two more XYZ tiles that completely cover the Red Sea. We will call them Red Sea Overview 2 and Red Sea Overview 3. On Overview 3, I will increase the zoom level to 9 just to see if we can. Next we will use Google Road to find a town. Then choose the best maps for the location. Which this time looks to be Bing Satellite. Then click on Create XYZ Tiles. Change the minimum zoom to 2 and the maximum zoom to 18. We will leave DPI at 96 this time. Next we will choose Draw on Map Canvas. Use click and drag to draw on the map to get our required area. Then click here. Pull down Save to File and click it. Yes, I finally figured out I need to change the folder to the Red Sea. And we will name the file Small Town 1. Click on Save and click on Run. This is the last XYZ tile for this video. Now, let's take a look at our work. First, we will move the new files into the Red Sea folder. Then, we'll open up OpenCPN. Now, we're going to have to add the new directory, the Red Sea folder, in OpenCPN and rebuild all the maps. And now we'll look at the new maps to music. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those. They said they came from Spanish.